Hi everyone, welcome to this month's Facts and Fun. Facts and Fun is our preschool nonfiction program that we read a few nonfiction books, we do an activity that goes along with that month's theme, and we also do a craft that goes with that month's theme. This month's theme is spiders. Now I have to tell you, I figured out this theme when I read this book, and we're gonna be reading this book as our third book, so stay tuned for this one. I think you'll like it. To start out with, we're going to read a book called Spiders. And this book is by Laura K. Murray. Hello, spiders. Spiders are animals that make silk. They like dark places. They live in trees and under rocks. They live in houses too. Do you ever see a spider in your house? Sometimes I do. Spiders have eight legs. They use body parts called spinnerets to make silk. So eight legs, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Wow, that's a lot of legs. Most spiders have eight eyes. So they have eight legs and eight eyes. Some spiders have lots of hair. So there we see the eight eyes and lots of hair. Oh my goodness. Big hairy spiders can eat frogs or mice. Other spiders eat bugs. They have fangs for biting. A baby spider comes out of an egg. It grows bigger, then it sheds its skin. Look at all those little babies. Lots of baby spiders. Many spiders make sticky webs. They catch food, then they rest. Goodbye, spiders. Wow, there were all kinds of different spiders, weren't they? Now we're going to do an activity about spiders and we'll have to see if we can figure out the different spiders that we're looking at too. Okay, everyone, are you ready to do your spider activity for today? In your kit, you should have a couple large pieces of white paper. They look like this. Inside the white paper, you have some stickers. You have black, purple, orange, and green. You should have at least one sheet of each one of those. And last but not least, you should have a bag of plastic spider rings. They look like this. You'll have a whole bag. Now, Miss Wendy can't get these on her finger very well, but I'm betting that they fit on your fingers just right but we're going to do an activity with these spider rings first. So I'm going to go ahead and dump out my spider rings onto my table. Now, do you remember in other months we have worked on patterns and we have also worked on matching? We're gonna do both of those, I, those activities in this activity today. So you need one of your pieces of paper and then what we're going to do, you can do it one of two ways you can make a pattern with your spider rings. All right, let's see. I think I will go, I'm going to go this way so that you, you can see that they go that way. I'm going to go purple, green, orange. I'm gonna leave the black ones out for now. So, to make this as a pattern, remember we have to go in the same order. So we go purple, kind of stuck together, aren't they? Green, orange. Can you see my pattern? It goes purple, here, we'll go a little bit farther forward so you can see them on the paper. It goes purple, green, orange, purple, green, orange. 
that's a pattern. I could keep going with that pattern because I have more spiders I could use, but I'm going to show you what you can do now. Now we're going to make the same pattern with our stickers. So what did we start out with? We started with a purple one. So we can put a purple sticker right by the purple spider. And then we did green. And the green one goes right by the green spider. And what was my last color? Orange. So then we put an orange sticker. I'm going to hold this up. Hopefully it'll all come together so that it doesn't um, slip and slide too much. See, we made a pattern. Now, we could keep going with our stickers, right? We could do another purple one, another green one to go with our green spider. And last but not least, another orange one. So remember, our pattern was purple, green, orange, purple, green, orange. Now watch what happens when I take off my spiders. Look, we have our pattern. Purple, green, orange, purple, green, orange. How cool is that? Now could you do it the other way too? Yes, you can. You could make a pattern with your stickers and then you could put your spiders by the stickers. Or another thing you could do is play a matching game. You could have somebody put a sticker on your paper, one of these colors, and you have to find the matching spider. So there's all kinds of things that you can do with your circle stickers and your spiders. And one last thing, just so that you know, the green ones are supposed to be glow in the dark. So I think if you put them in the sunshine and then went into a dark place, they might glow for you. I haven't tried it. You'll have to try it yourself. Have fun with your dots and spiders, everyone. Welcome back, everyone. How did you do with matching up your spiders with their colors, making patterns? I bet you made some great patterns with those uh, circle stickers that you use that match the spiders. Now we're going to find out a little bit more about spiders and their webs. This book is called Spiders and Their Webs, and it is by Linda Tagliofero. Webs. Spiders build webs on plants, rocks, and buildings. Spiders are arachnids. They have, how many legs do they have? Do you remember? Eight legs and two body sections. Look at that pretty web. Spiders build webs with strings of silk. Spiders make silk with their bodies. Okay. Some spiders weave webs in circles. Some spiders weave webs in flat sheets. Some spiders weave, weave webs with silk strings in all directions. Some spiders do not build webs. Look at that pretty one. Isn't that beautiful? Some spiders live in the same web for a long time. Some spiders make new webs every day. These spiders work for about one hour to build a web. This is a funnel web. That's kind of crazy looking, isn't it? Catching insects. Spiders catch insects to eat. The sticky webs trap insects. Spiders do not stick to their own webs. So they can walk on their webs and not stick, but everything else sticks, doesn't it? Egg sacs. Female spiders also use silk to make egg sacs. They lay eggs in the egg sacs. Some spiders lay two eggs, others lay 1,000 eggs. Oh, wow, that's a lot of eggs. 
spiders carry or hide their silk egg sacs. Hungry animals cannot find the egg sacs. See, this mommy spider's carrying hers with her, isn't she? Spiderlings hatch from the egg sac. Spiderlings use silk to float through the air. Spiderlings can find a new place to build their own webs. Look at all those baby spiders. So baby spiders are called spiderlings. I did not know that. A good home. Different kinds of spiders build different kinds of webs. No two webs are the same. Wow, there were all kinds of different webs that spiders build. Now we're going to do a craft that makes a spider web just for you. Spiders certainly make a lot of different webs, don't they? I think we should make some webs too. What do you think of this one? This is what we're going to make today. You're going to make your very own spider web on a black paper plate. So in your kit, you should have a black paper plate that already has some holes punched in it. I did that for you so you wouldn't have to do it yourself. You'll also have a bag of white yarn. Now I'm going to suggest just to make it easier for yourself that you get some scotch tape, that's the clear stuff, and a pair of scissors. That's all you're going to need. All right, so first we're going to start with our paper plate. Like I said, there's already some holes in it. Hopefully you can see that. Now, if you wanna be more complicated, that means more fancy on yours, you can also take a pair of scissors and you can cut slits in between where the holes are. So if you don't wanna do it that way, that's okay too. I did do that for this one, and I'll show you what the difference is in just a moment. So we're going to take out our white silk. We'll call it silk, just like spiders, although it's yarn. Okay, sometimes when we use yarn, the end gets frayed, so that's why I suggested that you get some scotch tape. If you take a small piece of tape about this big, and wrap it around the end, it'll make it like a shoelace, which will make it easier for you to put it through the holes. And that way, it won't get all frayed and make it hard for you to put it through the holes. So see, it looks just like a shoelace. Right, you have two pieces of yarn or silk. We're going to go ahead and get started. We're going to use that tape again and we're going to tape our yarn to the back of our plate so that it looks like this. Kind of hard to see it, I know. It's a white back with a white piece of yarn. But just start somewhere near one of the holes. Then we're going to take the other end and we're going to put it through the hole and pull it all the way through. Now, sometimes it might get a little tangled, so you'll have to untangle it. So we're going to, oh my goodness, look at all this yarn. We're going to pull it all the way through. So now it looks like this. Now I'm going to pick one of these other holes to stick it through too. I'm gonna go right straight across. So I'm going to stick it right in this one here. So I stuck it down. This time I went down going to pull it through. Ready? So that's what it's going to look like. And there we have one piece. And we're going to keep going back and forth like this until we have a web. I do have one suggestion for you. When you come out of a hole, pick a hole that's close by to go up into. So we're going to go up here into this one. Yeah, we're coming up through that one. And then I say, hmm, where does my spider want to go? I think my spider is going to go right here. And we're going to go down through this hole and pull it through. Okay, so why did I say to go to one that was close by? 
Well, if you don't, you're going to put all of your web on the back. You know, if you're going back and forth back here, we're not gonna be able to see it. But if you go from one to another one close, you're just going to have some of your yarn on the edges. I don't know if you can see this very well. Can you see that? That's the back. See how there's no yarn in here? Then we don't waste our, our spider silk on the back. All right, so I told you that you could also make slits in between. Slits are like this. They're just a little slit. If you want, besides the holes, you could also put your yarn in the slit and go to another slit. See like that? So then you're not going through holes, you're just putting it through the slits. I'll leave that up to you. You and your grown up can figure out which one you would like to do. I actually did both on mine. So I went back and forth until I was done with the one bunch of yarn and then I taped it on the back and then I did the other bunch of yarn too. So I would have lots of webbing on the front. And then I took one of the spiders that I had from our activity before and I put the spider on the web. So that is your own spider web. Why don't you keep working on that? while we read that fun book I promised to read you here at the end. So how is everyone doing on your spider webs? Are you working back and forth through the holes and maybe made little slits in the sides of your paper plates as well and you're going back and forth making a great web? I bet that they are turning out wonderful and you can put one of your little spiders on there so he can live on there, he or she, it maybe. Uh, put your spider on there. All right, as promised, I'm going to read I'm Trying to Love Spiders. And this one is by Bethany Barton. Now, this is a great book to read in person, but since we're not reading it in person, I'm going to need you to do something while you're watching this. There are certain times during this book that I'm going to need you to make a big smacking sound. Now, if you want to, you can clap your hands together and go, like that, or you can slap your hand on the table or slap your hand on the floor, whatever works for you. You'll know when it's time to do that. Okay, now we're going to read, I'm Trying to Love Spiders. I keep telling myself, spiders are cool. I want to love them. I mean, Spiders have been around for millions of years, moving silently, swinging into action. I want to think of them as bug ninjas. See, there's some bug ninja spiders. Like this spider right here. I'm going to try really hard to like him. Maybe if I study him for a while, let's look at him. I think it's working. Ah, it's moving. Squish it, squish it, squish it. Do you remember what to do? Ready? One, two, three. Let's see what happened. Oh, that didn't work out. But next time will be better. Next time I'll focus on all the cool superpowers spiders have like eight eyes. Remember we learned that they have eight eyes. And spider webs. Spider webs are cool. You made one yourself. Actually, you're probably making yours right now. Spiders spin webs out of protein packed spider silk. They make themselves. That's like you or me building a house with our hair and then catching food on it. That would be crazy. Some spiders even have billions of tiny hairs called scopuli. Hmm, I have to remember that word, scopuli. So they have tiny hairs on their legs that let them stick on walls or ceilings or, oh my gosh, 
There's a spider stuck there. Smash it. Squish it. Get it right now. Ready? One, two, three. Did you smash it? Oh, we're not very good at loving spiders just yet. If only spiders were more like things I really love, like burritos and soccer and rocket ships. Do you see the rocket ship? It has eight legs, just like a spider. Instead, their closest relatives are also totally gross. This is the arachnid family reunion. It includes scorpions and ticks too. But it's not like I'm scared of every icky thing. It's just something about spiders. Maybe it's the fact that almost all spiders are venomous. Spiders can't chew very well, much like your baby sister. They need liquid food. Since there's no, since no one's invented a tiny spider-sized blender, spiders rely on their venom to dissolve their dinners, making bugs soft and slurpable. That's kind of gross, isn't it? <laughs> but to be fair, while there are about 40,000 known species of spiders, only a few can bite humans and even fewer can harm you with their venom. Only a couple. It says wanted, dead, or smashed a lot. Fatal spider bites are so rare. You have a better chance of getting struck by lightning. Oh my gosh. Don't panic. Oh, okay, don't panic. But there's definitely a spider over there. And we're not gonna squish it this time, right? We'll just try to pet him. Can you pet spiders? Okay, let's try. We're gonna try to pet the spider. One, two, three. Oops, nope, we squished him. I'm never going to love spiders at this rate. Maybe I should focus on what spiders are good at. Do you know anything that spiders are good at? Let's find out. Like eating bugs. That's gotta be helpful, right? A single spider can eat over 75 pounds of bugs in a year. 75 pounds, that's like the size of a dog, a big dog too. I've even heard that some farmers use spiders to keep harmful insects out of their crops. And, oh, wait, looks like some of those bugs made it over here. Oh, look at all those bugs. Get out of here, bugs. I can't even read my book with all these. Hey, what's, what's that spider doing? he doing? Can you see? What's the spider doing? Wow! Thanks, little guy. That was really impressive. It says, spider present for you. Box of flies. Uh-oh. What do we see over here? I don't think that's a spider. Aw, did you make that for me? Oh, look at the web, how pretty. Did you make a pretty web? I think I might finally love, ah, cockroach. Squish it, smash it, make it go away. Ready, one, two, three. Let's see what we did. Oh, one thing at a time. Wasn't that a funny book about loving spiders? I have to tell you, I'm not the biggest fan of spiders all the time, but this one made me laugh. I hope it made you laugh too. I hope you had a good time matching up your spiders and your stickers. I hope you came up with a great web on your black paper plate and put one of those spiders on it. 
and I hope you enjoyed some of the nonfiction books we have here at the library about spiders. Thanks for listening, everyone. I'll see you next month. Bye.